All right, I'm back with a first time idea, but something I want to do for a while. Now, as many people know, there's a series called Game of Thrones. A lot of people may suggest that it jumped a shark. A lot of people may suggest that it can't be as good as it really is. And those people are usually One Piece haters too. But keep in mind, I'm a One Piece hater. I've never watched One Piece. I'm telling you right now, don't be that type of person. Don't be a contrarian with Game of Thrones. It is now March 6th, I believe, and we have the official trailer for the Season 8 coming out in April 14th. Something that I've been waiting on for about three months now. I've been just the entire series in about... 14 days between between 9 and 14 days uh hazardous to your health but great to your mind uh with no further ado i'm gonna watch this trailer give a couple of thoughts uh i don't know jack shit about the books but i'm gonna give as much as i know about them let's get it all right we start with aria start Doing the running man. I think that's Sir Davos. Let me, I'm not going to pause too often. But a lot of people complain about how dark this trailer was. And it is incredibly dark at the beginning. This is my second time watching it, by the way. Sir Davos, we got Varys too. Okay. April 14th of the Golden Day. Now this... This right here is a golden company uh, that was mentioned briefly in season seven towards the end by Cersei Lannister, the massive mercenary crew that she would be buying to fight off Daenerys' army, um, and as well as the North, the Vale, et cetera, et cetera, the Wildlings. And while I think in a one-on-one -on -one fight, even with the mercenary army, I still think that the North would have, the North plus the Nairs would have more men. I think, for, this is my assumption, not based on anything in particular. I think it's going to be a two-front war where you have one side, Jon Snow, probably the Wildlings, Daenerys against the uh, Nor the, the Night King, Jaime Lannister, uh, Brianna Tarth probably. And then on the other side, you have Arya and Sansa back at Winterfell likely holding it down against Cersei and uh, the rest of Westeros. I think they have the rest of Westeros conquer, conquered, I'm pretty sure. Oh, yeah, I forgot. <laughs> My bad. I forgot to actually say who this. So you get back here, and this is supposed to be Henry Strickland, a character. I think it's Henry, right? Henry Strickland, a character from the book, who uh, confronts Aegon Targaryen, not Jon Snow, another Aegon Targaryen. And his cohort John Connington I don't think there will be another Aegon Targaryen so he'll probably be a different character so we got Tormund uh, my man's with the fire blade wait the guy with the fire blade he died and no 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 the guy who revived him died I'm sorry I'm not good with the names between that whole crew the, the brotherhood of, without banners or whatever I'm not good with their names, but I thought he died, but he didn't die. The guy who always revives him died. Shout out to them for surviving against the Night King as well. I don't know who that is, but this is, I believe, Winterfell. That couldn't be Bran Stark because he can't walk. I don't know who that'd be. So that's Daenerys, Jon Snow. You got the dragons, you got the army. This is Gendry leading the, um, what I presume would be as many world as they get together to make um, Dragon Glass. And that's going to be interesting. I don't know how much they could possibly accrue. I don't know how many numbers they have, but they do have a lot of, pretty much the entire north to work with. And, you know, Daenerys has conquered the lands. So you got uh, Jorah Mormon. He's, I'm telling you right now. Grey Worm is, hey, just get ready for it. That's all I'm going to say. I'm telling you right now. Jamie, the god Lannister. 
uh, piece of filth services. <laughs> I got something for. I got a couple of thoughts about the dragons. I got a couple of thoughts about them. I presume. Let's get back a little bit more. I presume this is the first scene. It's either the first scene. This is probably the first episode where John meets uh, Bran for the first time. I don't know how long. This is probably after they meet. He probably tells him he goes to the tree. I forget, like, the blood that comes from the tree, right? There's something special about putting your hand in a tree that I forgot. I think it's something to do with the Warwick feature um, that only Bran has in the movie, in the show, in the, the books. I believe all the Starks are Warwicks, but maybe John will unlock, like, Warwick, Super Saiyan 3, Super Saiyan War God. Maybe. I, I I presume, though, that touching those trees will allow John to see something that he wasn't supposed to see. <laughs> so we got we got Clegane. Uh, that was a quick pause. But we got Clegane. Uh, if you saw the the collection, the what was it GQ, I think, Entertainment Weekly, they had the two Clegane brothers fight each other. So I suppose, I mean, everybody knew there was going to be a fight between them at some point. If the two sides are fighting, yeah, there's going to be a, side, a fight between them individually, which is going to be worth watching. I think it's from 7, isn't it? That's from season 7? The dialogue was, anyway. So this this is the scene I think a lot of people were looking forward to. That's a perfect pause, by the way. So I believe the dragon on the right is, is Drogon, right? I believe the dragon on the left is Rhaegal... Um, should I call him Targaryen? No. Uh, the dragon... That is one of the sons of uh, Daenerys called Rhaegal. And obviously is named after Rhaegar Targaryen, uh, the father of Jon. And I believe the the brother of Daenerys. Obviously, I mean, he's going to be, you know, Jon's going to ride Rhaegal. I mean, come on. I think it's a part of the... Now, this prophecy was different in the books, but I believe it's also mentioned in the TV as well, that it'd be three dragons rolled by three people. I'm not sure at the time, because I think it was mentioned in the TV show around season two-ish, I think, from what I can remember. Um, I don't think that was mentioned initially to be the Night King, but the way it's played out, maybe it always was. A lot of people assumed it would be for Tyrion, who I think was rumored as a Targaryen in the books. If that's mentioned, I think it's only going to be in passing. I don't think it'll have any significance on a TV show because it's too late doing anything with that because I mean, there's only two dragons that they have control of unless Tyrion can steal the dragon from the Night King, which I don't think that's possible. I mean, I mean shout out to Tyrion, man. He does a lot of cool things. I don't need to pull him up to the Night King with the chopper, knocking his knees down, pulling his head out like Kratos, and just throwing him to the ground and stealing Viserion back. I don't think that's happening. So more than likely, the prophecy is going to be these two riding their dragons against Viserion, who will be riding, or the Night King will be riding Viserion. Let's keep it moving. Sansa, the Queen of Winterfell, currently. Arya, Daenerys, the god Tyrion. This is, it looks like primarily the, um, the Unsullied against I mean obviously that's the that's the money shot the uh the the line of roads fifty minutes into the the film type of money shot. I'm presuming that's gonna be I mean there's not much presuming that has to happen. I don't think that's gonna be the Night King because the Night King never is, is like directly the first one in his arm. He's usually surrounded by um other White Walkers. But I mean regardless, they're coming. It's interesting that they met each other at a amicable place. Usually you think like one side would have got the other, but as I think we've seen, one side usually being the humans pulling up on the White Walkers. That that hasn't worked out yet. So they're just they you know the, hey they squatted up, they met them, come shoot the fair one, and now we're here. Game of Thrones, the final season. April fourteenth. Hey, April 14th. That's a perfect time for him to come back, I think. All right, so here are my... Oh, my goodness. What? No, please. <laughs> what? 
<laughs> All right, we didn't need to see anything anyway. But here are my general thoughts about what has transpired, what we've been given, what we've been teased, uh, et cetera, et cetera. I'm not going to go into deep predictions because that's why we came on here. But I think based on that trailer, I think you can really make the argument that the front line of the army is going to get desecrated, like off rip. They they seem like they have to have some dragon class weapons. They have armor. They have Jamie Lannister. They have Grey Worm. They have Brienne of Tarth. Here's how I think it's gonna work, based on what I'm what, what I'm feeling. I don't think Brienne of Tarth is gonna die. I think she might get roughed up quite a bit. I don't think she's gonna die. I I've heard this prediction a couple of days ago, and I kind of feel like it's fairly true. I think Tormund is gonna die. I think it's going to be a fight between Tormund and Brienne. Uh, white, white Tormund and Brienne. I, I can't see Jamie dying until Jamie sees Cersei again. However that may be. Uh, I know it's a common trend going right now as far as bets and stuff. That either Jamie or Arya with the Night King as being a dark horse as being the one to kill Cersei. I'm not sure if Cersei has to die. I know the prediction says she had to die. Um, I don't know if she has to die, but she probably will die. Um, to me, Jamie makes more sense than Arya. I mean, I know the whole, you know, list. You got everybody else on the list, all that, but I don't, I, I just don't think that. I think Arya could be within the reason, like the the area where Cersei gets killed at. I don't think Arya's going to be the one to kill Cersei, to be honest with you. I don't know how Jamie could help fight in this war because he has one hand and he never learned how to fight with that one hand. Uh, he got washed by normal men. So, I mean, these White Walkers are like far above the battle capabilities of some of the people that Jamie's gotten washed by in, in the past. So, I don't think he'll be of much use, but I think that the, I'll close this. The three storylines I'd like for people to watch going forward, I'm trying not to make them too, like, over the top, you know, obvious, because it's up top of my head, and usually you go up top of your head, you go for the most obvious things. I'm trying to stick a low-key narrative. The Arya and Sansa relationship, I know that they kind of played it up to trick um, Peter Baelish, who may or may not be dead. May, may not. Um, but I do believe that if your two lords of Winterfell are those two, which presumably will be Without uh, Aegon Targaryen there, um, it's gonna be some conflicts because they handle things differently, vastly differently. Um, so that's gonna be something to watch for. Uh, second, probably the season one cast flashbacks would be worth watching. There's definitely gonna be some Ned Stark features, especially whenever Jon Snow realizes that he's a Targaryen. It's going to be some flashbacks of that. Uh, probably some Catelyn Stark flashbacks. Maybe some new character cameos in the form of flashbacks. Um, actually, I'm doing, with, doing that with Catelyn. Maybe maybe Ned. I don't think they'll do Rob because I feel like Rob probably has been moved on, like departed from this long enough. But uh, I'd love to see a Rob, like new content. I, I mean, Rob was like the Stark we never had, you know, like. I know maybe Recon could be that, but Recon really didn't matter, you know, in the grand scheme of things. Um, but, you know, probably some, some flashbacks in that way. Maybe some outside of the Starks, obviously. You could have, like, maybe Tywin. Um, maybe a stretch in that in that regard. But there's going to be some early season flashbacks, I think. Uh, maybe not often, but enough to make it, you know, worthwhile. And my third... It's going to get lost. It's probably going to get, like, at most, like, I'd say 40 minutes in total of the, the final six episodes. But the Theon Greyjoy narrative closing out, um, the seventh Stark child, I guess, if you want to think about it like that, he, his narrative has pretty much felt like, what's a good comparison to Theon Greyjoy? Think, like, any character in any show that, like, just gets his ass beat constantly. But like never gets his comeuppance. His only veritable like worthwhile like win like W 
since being decimated by by Ramsey Bowen was like John telling him, hey, you know, if it wasn't for my family, I would be just like living hell out of you. But at the same time, it's still a start. So, I mean, you know, take your, take your chin off the ground, man. And stop, stop being a dickless weirdo, man. And that, that was followed or uh, succeeded by him getting the hell out of him to pilot a boat of like 10 people against Euron Greyjoy, which, I mean, maybe Euron's preoccupied and like he doesn't see Theon coming, but um, realistically, I probably shouldn't end up in a W for Theon. I hope that Theon takes a W. I don't think even if he does, it won't really matter in the grand scheme of things unless like Euron has the, the uh, Golden Company pulled up and then like... <laughs> It's like Theon bombed the boats and like sunk the, the Golden Company. Like that's something I could think of that could like be of effect for the rest of the, you know, the rest of the world. But you know, shout out to my boy Theon. I think he deserves at least one more W before it's all over with. And uh, yeah, that's my thoughts. I uh, hope you enjoyed. Hope you enjoyed season eight. Six episodes. I'm thinking an hour and twenty minutes runtime would be, you know, worthwhile. I mean, I think like an hour and a half might be a little bit much, but. I take it, of course. It definitely can't be just an hour flat. You know, they're going to have to make a lot of... They don't really have many narratives that they need to close, per se, but, I mean, we need a lot of content, man. This is this is it. We haven't gotten a 10-season episode in, like, what, three years or something like that? So, I think we deserve some hearty run time, and I hope we get it. Uh, peace for me. Shout out to Rob Stark. Shout out to the House Lannisters. Uh, shout out to... <laughs> That unborn baby who might not even make it. And, uh, you know, fuck Cersei.